Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Takedown, Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids series for unfiltered conversations about tobacco and advocacy within communities most impacted by the tobacco industry. My name is Alyssa Williams, a former Youth Advocate of the Year and an intern with the Campaign for tobacco Free kids. Today, we're joined by Larita Ruffin, who is the chair of the National Black Nurses Association Substance Use Disorders Committee. Dr. Ruffin is a longtime advocate for reducing tobacco use and has treated tobacco related illness and addiction for nearly a decade. He is a distinguished healthcare provider and educator, and we're so glad to talk to him today. Dr. Ruffin, thank you for joining us today on The Takedown. Thank you so much, Alisa. I bring you greetings from the National Black Nurses Association's president, Dr. Martha Dawson, the uh, executive board, uh, the Substance Use Disorders Committee, and the members, and I'm delighted uh, to be with you today. Congratulations on your induction as a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing last year. I can imagine that must be such a huge honor. As we know, the past two years have been particularly challenging for healthcare providers. What led you to enter the healthcare field and tackle tobacco control work? Thank you so much, Alisa. Indeed, being inducted into the Academy of Nursing is by far the greatest honor in my career. Yes, the last two years have been very challenging, especially when you talk about Black communities. Seeing what happened with uh, the death of Joy, George Floyd and the COVID pandemic, it becomes evident the need for the community of color to regain trust in our healthcare system and, and justice system. It is important that we increase the nursing workforce and nurse practitioner workforce to reflect the diversity in the nation. Patients need to be able to see healthcare providers who really look like them. Research shows that when the patient interacts with the healthcare provider whom they trust or those they can easily identify with, they are more likely to have positive health outcomes. We need to be more intentional in treating our, pa our patients as individuals while respecting and applying the platinum rule, treat others the way they like to be treated. As we recognize National Minority Health Month in April, we're focusing on reducing tobacco-related health disparities that continue in minority communities. What role do healthcare providers play in helping to reduce these disparities? Alisa, Unfortunately, the tobacco industry targets the minority population. Nurses have the ability to make their voices heard. In fact, nursing has been named the most trusted profession for 21 years in a row. It was in 2001 when the, um, the attack, 9-11, uh, that's when the firefighters uh, rightfully uh, earned the title of most trusted profession, but nursing has long uh, been, been known to be a, a trusted profession. So that's why the National Black Nurses Association take this stand to save our population from tobacco related illnesses. We need all nurses to use their trusted voices to work with organizations like NBNA, and campaign for tobacco free kids to make an impact. It's time for healthcare providers to stop telling patients they need to stop smoking, but really to help patients to quit smoking, to help them to quit vaping. Healthcare providers must assist their patients in finding the right cessation treatments for them. Despite more quit attempts, Black Americans are less successful in quitting than white and, and Hispanic cigarette smokers, possibly because of lower utilization and cessation treatment, such as counseling and medications. A couple months ago, we had the opportunity to speak with NBNA students as a part of our Campaign for the Culture initiative. Students said that they were seeing a gap in education and prevention resources about tobacco products, especially with newer products like e-cigarettes. 
I know you have developed a smoking sensation and vaping education toolkit as the chair of the NBNA Substance Use Disorder Committee. Can you share more about that program and its impact? Of course, Alison. Um, yeah, this was a great conversation uh, with NBNA Youth. Uh, you know, um, after I started practicing as a nurse practitioner in primary care, I was tired of seeing my patients dragging their oxygen tank to go out in the snow to smoke a cigarette. That's when I said, something is really wrong with this picture. And these, these patients really need help. So not only I developed a smoking cessation toolkit uh, to address the uh, smoking and vaping, and which has been very uh, successful, I have been able to treat hundreds of patients to quit smoking uh, successfully. And I, don't, I don't really pat myself in the back for that, but this is something I'm really proud of and uh, really proud of my patients who've been able uh, to quit smoking. It's not easy, but with the right tool and with um, being intentional as a healthcare provider, you know, I've been able to have uh, that success. But you know, due to the predatory nature of big tobacco and its devastating impact on Black Americans. I held a series of train the trainer workshops for over 200 teachers and nurses in five major school districts in New Jersey. So the goal of the workshop was to educate participants on the different types of vaping products, such as fruity flavors and devices that are directly you know, impacting uh, the youth. And they have been uh, targeted to attract the youth, unfortunately. To date, over 10,000 students have been educated on the health hazards of smoking and vaping. So um, during my tenure as chair of the uh, NBNA Substance Use Disorders Committee, I spearheaded the uh, national, uh, the NBNA No Tobacco Day to advocate for increased awareness of the negative impact of smoking and vaping. The committee developed an evidence-based toolkit to mobilize nurses to educate the public regarding smoking and vaping. So the toolkit uh, and the smoking and vaping cessation program are uh, currently being implemented in 124 NBNA chapters across 35 states, impacting the lives of millions of people who suffer and die from smoking and vaping related illnesses. So similar to other ethnics and racial groups, African-Americans report a strong desire to quit smoking. And in fact, they are more likely than Caucasian to have quit smoking for one day during the previous year. However, African-American smokers are less successful in their quit attempts compared to Caucasian smokers. A finding that persists even after controlling for socioeconomic factors, factors associated with smoking cessation disparities among African-Americans and other ethnic, ethnic minority groups are not completely understood. However, lower abstinence rate among ethnic minority might imply limited referral to and or use of effective smoking cessation treatment, differential outcomes when participating in recommended treatments or higher rates of smoking relapse following periods of abstinence compared to the general population. These factors highlight the need for the development of effective smoking cessation interventions for African-American smokers and subpopulation at increased risk for morbidity and mortality associated with tobacco use. Some of the unique social cultural ex exposure for African-American smoking behaviors include 
elevated stress associated with living in areas of high poverty, the presence of other smokers in the homes, more permissive social norms related to smoking, including smoking within the homes, less advice to quit smoking from healthcare providers and other direct marketing to African American communities by tobacco companies. These may also contribute to the widening gap we see in smoking cessation outcomes. In addition to cessation and prevention, public policy is one of the most effective tools to reduce tobacco use. What are your views about the FDA's plan to get rid of menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars? <laughs> uh, well, you know, these actions have been way overdue, but I really applaud the FDA for taking these steps to ban menthol, which is the last allowable flavor in cigarette and banning all flavors in cigars, which will help save lives, particularly among those uh, disproportionately affected by these deadly products. So with these actions, the FDA will help significantly reduce the youth initiation, increase the chances of smoking cessation among current smokers, and address health disparities experienced by communi communities of color, low income population. I truly believe this action represent powerful evidence-based strategies and approaches that will have an extraordinary public health impact. And we will be able to save our youth from tobacco with these actions. As someone who has worked in tobacco control since I was 12, I'm curious what keeps you inspired in this fight to reduce tobacco use. I keep fighting because growing up, I noticed how disproportionately affected I was as a black young woman in America in the, in the tobacco industry and how as a youth, there weren't many resources for myself or my peers to really be educated on the subject and what we were really putting into our bodies. Um, so I'm curious, what keeps you motivated? Wow, this is a great question. Um, you know, I remain motivated because one lost life related to smoking or vaping is too many. Seeing the level of appeal to the younger generation to try electronic cigarettes, seeing the number of jewel pods teenagers are vaping, are using, that makes me sick. The amount of nicotine in one standard jewel cartridge is roughly equal to the amount of one pack of cigarettes. That's about 200 puffs. And unfortunately, those kids, the teenagers, they are using like two, three packs. So unless something is done, we will be creating a newer generation of patients with nicotine addiction. You know, the brain is not fully developed until the age of 25. So when you have young kids, teenagers, using those high nicotine uh, contents or, or you know, using multiple jewels pads and um, the amount of nicotine they are getting is equivalent to three, four packs of cigarettes a day. When you have young kids, doing that at an early age, we as a nation are setting them to fail. I believe we need to do everything we can to help our teens to understand the solution is to say no to nicotine, to say no to tobacco, and to say no to e-cigarettes. I dream of a world where no children dies of tobacco smoke. The same dream you have is, the, is my dream. Because I'm really tired and, of seeing patients struggling to take a breath. And unless 
we help the population to understand it's not okay to keep using this product regardless of how appealing they are unless we take a stand and we help everyone to understand this is not okay we will not get there and you know with the work campaign for tobacco free kids is doing i truly believe although the world is long we will get there Dr. Ruffin, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you and engaging in such a valuable discussion. Make sure to check out the National Black Nurses Association and Tobacco Free Kids on social media. All our handles will be in the description below. And be sure to check out our other takedown conversations as well. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a great day.